Yay. Well, you, you can't. <laughs> they can't see you because this is up there right now. So you're good. So they can hear us, but they can't see you yet. They're they're just all dying to see you in your jams. No, my jams. No. Be like this. You're gonna hide behind me so they can't see your jams. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you ready? I'm gonna push the button. But didn't you already do it? Well, it's, right now they see this. So I'm gonna push the button. They're gonna see you. You ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. Hang on. Hi, everybody. I have a partner tonight. Well, I'm just saying good night. Oh, Love he's you. just saying good night. But he just wanted to say hello. Good night, Charlie. Good night. So Sleep in well. The morning? What time in the morning? We gotta leave early. Do the chalk class? Yeah, chalk class is early tomorrow. Hey, everybody. I'm Nick and Maria, your independent chalk couture designer. Welcome to our. Oh, I'm like looking at my screen and I see Charlie behind me. I'm really go. It's been a long day. Hello, everybody. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Terry. Hey, Verge. Hey, Linda and Cheryl. Yes, he went to bed. Thank goodness. He needs his sister to come home from camp. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you don't really realize how much your children need siblings until their siblings go away and you're their entertainment. But anyway, he's off to bed. So I'm making Maria, your independent track couture designer. Welcome. Let's see what day of the week it is. It is Tuesday. Losing track of time. It is Tuesday, and we are going to have a super fun project tonight. If I have multiple projects, I don't know if we'll get multiple projects done. We'll see how fast number project number one goes. So I am working on some welcome signs because welcome signs are super popular. They're very versatile. And who doesn't need a welcome sign? And then I noticed lately, as I've been taking my pictures of my front door for you lovely, beautiful ladies, that when my packages arrive, that... My entrance is really boring. <laughs> it's so boring. So eventually we will make a welcome sign for my own home. Right now I'm making welcomes, a welcome sign for someone else's home. So um, let me show you what we're doing. I am your independent chalk couture designer. My name is Making Maria or Maria for those of you who don't know me or know me. Um, I'm using a product, an amazing product called Chalk Couture. And Chalk Couture is reusable silk screen transfers that you can use over and over and over again. And the company, myself included, are chalking the halls, walls, accents, and accessories of homes across America and Canada. I should add that on there, and Canada now. It was created to be designed, loved, and repeated for every season and any reason. And we bring easy, high-end DIY home decor directly to you. And we do that by offering reusable adhesive silk screen transfers, which you're going to see me use this evening. Chalkology paste, which is semi-permanent, a couture ink, which can be permanent if it's heat set, surfaces that you can create on, and all the accessories you need to make chalking an easy, stress-free crafting experience that you will love. Love. It's so much fun. Hey, Jan, welcome back to being stateside from your little uh, excursion to, you know, across the big pond. I think that's how you say that, all those fancy things. So let me show you what we're making. We are making a super cool um, welcome sign. And I have one of those big circle boards that I love to use. Um, and I have stained it. And this time, look. Look, Mom. Aren't you proud of me? I actually did both sides. <laughs> I'm always looking for the easy out. But I did actually do both sides. So I have stained this board. That's the only thing I've... Well, I sanded it. And then I stained it. I have applied the wax to it already. Um right before I hit the live button so I do need to buff the wax off and what I'm gonna do is a technique that I've seen we've done before um, but probably not with this particular pattern and um, not in this way if that makes any sense but I've seen it done several times and I think it is stunning when it's done so this is one of our welcome signs that I need to make I'm making another one on a white enamel board and I'm making another one on slate so We'll see how far we get and how fast this one goes. But what I'm going to do with this, as you can see, I have applied painter's tape across the middle of it. I used my fancy level and tape measure and came up with, uh, you know, space. This we will leave blank. We're going to chalk on the top and on the bottom, and we're going to chalk it with the modern floral which is so, so pretty when it is done. So we're gonna put Modern Floral on the top and on the bottom, and then there's this really cool welcome transfer that has welcome in two different fonts and home, and we're going to put this block welcome 
in the middle where our painter's tape is. Um, that's the plan. So I am going to quickly buff this and I'm going to pick it up and buff it so you don't shake. So I have applied the wax and now I'm just buffing it off. Um, the wax is, uh, because this is wood, you want to wax anything wood. You always, here, I'll give you something to look at that's more interesting. <laughs> Ooh, I'm seeing, I hope I'm not going to freeze. Um, so I am waxing, I did wax it, now I'm just buffing it off. But the wax, what that does is it provides a barrier between the wood and your transfer. So your transfer doesn't have to work as hard. Um, and it, it's really for the health and longevity of your transfers that we do that. Jacob is mopping the house. Jacob, is there anything you don't do? <laughs> Crafting is way more fun than mopping, Jacob. You should know that. Okay, so I will tell you that this board is an optical illusion as it was my nemesis with the whole level thing because the lines in the board go at an angle. So what visually you think is straight is really not straight. So that's why I had to pull the laser level out. I had to do all kinds of things to get this bad boy. <laughs> but it is measured and supposedly these lines are level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this beautiful transfer. This is a background pattern, but it's beautiful all on its own. I have seen people do this on kitchen tables and furniture, chairs, um, pillows. This makes a stunning pillow. This is just a really pretty, really pretty transfer. We did it um, not that long ago. We did some ceramic dishes. Uh, I don't know where they are. Um, oh, here it is where we just used part of it on a ceramic dish this was a different one but um this is a just it's a it's a stunning stunning transfer when it's made so what we're gonna do hey mary hey michelle michelle just left my driveway hey stacy welcome everybody thanks for watching me i always appreciate it and it's so much fun when you guys watch me so what I'm going to do, I've used this transfer several times, so he's not super sticky. So I'm not too worried about fuzzing him too much. And look at how carelessly I took him off of his backer. <gasps> oh my gosh, I should know better, right? He is a D-sized transfer. But again, I've used it many times, so he is not overly sticky. So I am going to attach him, but I'm kind of being strategic in what I'm going to see because I'm not obviously using the entire transfer. So I'm gonna use it on, we want flowers, but. Okay, so I'm putting them on and I'm rubbing all my air out. Now you would think with a big board like this that this project is gonna take a super long time, but it's really not. Although I should probably do it straight, right? Wait, logically you would do it straight. So I am rubbing my ear out because he has a lot of screen. There's a ton of amazing detail to this transfer. Looks super cool when it's done. Okay, so I'm just putting it all down and I'm just gonna simply do cream, which is not called cream. It is called Fawn and the new color is called Almond. So Fawn has retired. I don't have my new colors yet. So we're sticking with our old colors, but Fawn is a very pretty almond color. And the new color is called almond. I think they're pretty close to each other. I haven't seen it yet though, so I can't completely speak to um, it. So I'm going to stick this on, and I'm going to use the bad boy who apparently didn't get cleaned the last time I used him because there's chalk paste on him. So I, well, for the sake of time, I will use an angled squeegee. The angled squeegee is an amazing little tool. Um, this has been my favorite squeegee for a very long time for larger projects. In the holidays, the, I use this guy almost exclusively, but he has, he's super, um, he's not flimsy. Stiff, he's very stiff. So he is much stiffer than like the small squeegee. You know, the small squeegee has a lot of give to it. This one isn't so much. It's not as easy to flex it. So it's super nice. Hey, Stacy. You didn't give those little gray plates as presents. I want to buy them from you. Actually, Stacy, I did give them as presents. Um, the one that you just saw 
I actually burned. If you look at it closely, I did that. I tried one with ink. The other ones I did with paste and I tried it with ink. So that one, because I was like, oh, if I do ink, then I don't have to seal it. And I put it in the oven and I had my um, toaster oven on way too high and it burned the ink. So <laughs> you can't buy it. You, you don't want it, Stacey. Um, and I did use all of them. Okay, so this angled squeegee is super nice because it has an angle. And you just go right across. It's a very nice squeegee. Does a really good job. Um, he's a nice alternative to the um, big boy. Because that big boy is not pricey. None of this stuff is really pricey. Um, but this one is, I think it's less expensive. I'm not even sure. But he also has more uses. The big boy is, you know, he's pretty limited to big projects. Okay, so I'm just getting all my chalk paste on. Um, so yeah, Stacy, if you notice those two, both of those I did with ink and I put them in the oven. I had my oven on too high of a temperature and it burned. And in fact, one of them was done in colors and it faded all of my color. So I learned my lesson. I did chalk neck the next one and I sealed it. Okay, so I'm just again making sure I have the whole area of my silk screen covered so that I have chalk and I'm not going to have any blank spaces. Got to be especially careful around your edges. So now I'm going to take all my excess off. So one of the keys to chalking is the um, thickness of your paste. That can make a big difference as to, um, especially if you're layering, your success in having your paste stick on the layer that's underneath. So um, it, it's not hard, but when you first chalk, it, it takes a little, a couple times to, you know, kind of get the, the uh, amount of paste down that you need. Okay, so you ready? You're gonna be wowed, I'm telling you. Ta-da, look at how, oh, goodness. Love this transfer. All right, so this is the first half. Now, obviously, the blue painter's tape will be gone and it'll be a straight line. But um, this is the first part of our look at this transfer. Look at the detail you get in those flowers. It's just a stunning, stunning transfer. Okay, so I'm gonna dry it because I'm gonna manipulate it quite a bit because I now need to put the second layer, or the second half on. So I'm just drying it. So tomorrow morning I'm teaching uh, a kid class at Crumby Art. We're doing um, the splash technique, which is that really cool. Um... Ooh, Stacy. So Stacy came to a craft night and she made these super cute little um, Marquette University like votives, but they were those yogurt. You know, she reused yogurt containers. Those super fun yogurt containers that I love so much. And she filled them with M&Ms for friends and they liked them. I'm so glad they liked them. All right, so now we're gonna do the second half and I'm not washing my transfer off. I'm just sticking the bad boy down, but I wanna be again strategic about the part of the transfer that I use. I mean, I don't want it to be matchy matchy, which if I do that, it is gonna be matchy matchy. Let me do it this way. This is a lot of leaf. It's more leaf and less flower than I want. Let's try it this way. So you do, you know, take a look at your transfer and see which part of the transfers you want. When you're using a different, you know, you're not using the whole transfer, you can be picky about which part of the transfer you use. It doesn't have to be, you know, the part that is all lined up perfectly. You can kind of create your own. Um, I have a friend that loves to chalk, and she almost always goes off the edges of things. She never does the whole transfer straight on. Again, I'm just pushing all my air out, getting my transfer to stick, because there's a lot of screen to these leaves. And I want to make sure that I get all that amazing detail. Just stick her down. Now it says my father is watching. Hi dad, if you're watching. I don't know if you really are. Sometimes you're just scrolling and you happen to see me. But if you're watching dad, and I know you don't know how to comment, but I'll say hi. Hi dad. 
because it, it would be rude not to say hi to your dad if he was watching you, right? Okay, so again, I got all my chalk paste down. I'm t I tend to be very generous with how much chalk paste I put down because I end up squeegeeing it all off anyway. And now I just, again, take my angled squeegee. This is a, I kind of forgot how good the squeegee is. <laughs> Why don't I use this guy more? I love this guy. When I first started chalking, this was the squeegee I used all the time. I don't know why I got away from it. Because he's really nice. I love the resistance. I find it, um, I don't have to stick my fingers down as far and, you know, have that give that sometimes makes your paste not as smooth as you would like it. So again, I'm just going all around, getting all my silk screens covered up. So that I can, uh, once I get it all covered up, then I'll smooth it out. But if I'd used the big boy, this would have gone faster. But we're going to have to resurrect this squeegee. I don't use him often enough. He's really nice. You know, that was kind of how the multi-purpose tool went. I had it forever, and I just didn't use it often enough. I think you just, you know, you get in the habit of you grab that whatever's close and handy. Okay, so again, now I'm just going to smooth out my lines, take all my excess paste off. So, Dad, if you are really watching, these are the surfaces I stained this at your house when I was at your house a couple weeks ago. Weekend? Last weekend? Two weekends ago? Something like that. Okay, so I'm smoothing out all my lines, making sure I have my whole silk screen covered. And I'm about to peel and reveal the second half. Get ready. You're going to go, ooh, ah, I know you are. Ready? Dun, dun, dun. Oh, yeah, you are. Oh, my, this is pretty. Okay, so I'm just going to stick this up here because he needs to actually go in. He doesn't fit in my water bath. So now I'm going to pull my painter's tape off so that we have our negative space in which to put our welcome. And I'm hoping it's really straight because I measured, I had the level out, I had everything out. This side I'm not gonna pull off until I dry it. But I really worked hard to make sure that this guy was um, straight. <laughs> Way more than I normally do because you know I don't normally pay that much attention. a lot of paste so it just takes a second to dry now the person that I'm making this for um, their house is white so th the purpose of this is to go on the exterior of somebody's house and their house is uh, like white siding and red like a maroon red so we're gonna do our welcome in current jam all right so Pulling all my painter's tape off. And now we have this very nice negative space in the middle. It's kind of hard to see the whole thing. Let's see if I... And again, it is very deceiving because the lines of the board are crooked. <laughs> and it makes it look crooked. But it's not crooked. I promise. It's not crooked. Okay, where's my top? Make sure you have your... Always check for your hanger to make sure that you have your board. Oh, it sure does look crooked, doesn't it? Totally looks crooked. <laughs> but it's an optical illusion because of this line right here. It messes me up every time. Because if I measure it in four and a half inches, in four and a half inches. So I might have to move the hanger. Maybe that's not in the right spot to be. All right, so now I'm going to use this. This welcome is called hmm, Welcome Script. That's original, isn't it? <laughs> it's called Welcome Script. So this is a really nice transfer. It has welcome on it in two different ways. Welcome signs are one of the very most popular signs for people to make and people to purchase. Because, you know, we all want to welcome our guests as they arrive in our homes, right? So... So all kinds of different ways to do it. So I'm taking my fancy new transfer trimmers and I'm cutting my transfer. My transfer has lines right along it so it tells me exactly where I need to cut. 
and the knot makes lines crooked. The knot. It just looks crooked. Just got back from double header in Waukesha. Oh, Carol, you were in my neck of the woods. Did she win, Carol? It was, did, was it Caroline that was playing? Did she win? I hope she won. My poor husband, my daughter's at camp all week. Oh, this is going to be pretty. Isn't it going to be pretty? <laughs> see, now it comes into focus, right? Now you see where I'm going with this. Um, my daughter's at camp all week, and my poor husband is the coach of her softball team. And he's got to go to softball. There's three games this week. <laughs> and she's not there. Once you put the word welcome on, you probably won't notice the illusion of it being crooked. I agree, Cheryl. Because see, now look, look, now it doesn't look crooked. But that's because you put the couture teal is covering it all up. But it's going to be a pretty little sign when it's done. Because it's going to go outside on someone's porch, I will, um, I will seal this board with my polycrylic. And the polycrylic that I prefer to use is Minwax polycrylic. This is on the pricier side of um, polycrylics. You can totally use, you know, a Rust-Oleum product. I mean, I have several different ones that I like to use. Kind of depends on the surface that I'm putting it on, but this is my favorite one. Um, but it is, it is more pricey. Like this can, I want to say is 10 bucks, where you know, this can is three to kind of keep it in perspective. But this does do a very nice job of making things waterproof. No, it was Lizzie. They lost first game, won the second game. Oh, that's cool. I didn't, I guess I didn't realize Lizzie plays two. I guess I should have, but I didn't. Okay, so um, I will seal this bad boy. Look at how pretty that is. Oh my gosh. Maybe I won't get this away. <laughs> this, is, this is a problem, right? I always make things and then I'm going to say I'm going to give them away and then I don't give them away. Okay, so I'm going to write welcome on the back of my transfer. I write the name of my transfer on the back of my transfer for several reasons. For those of you who are new to watching, um, I write welcome on the back because, first off, I want to know which side of my backer sheet is the back of the transfer so that when I'm done and I've washed my transfer off and it's time to put it away, I put it back on the proper side. Notice how I did that. I laid my transfer down, face down, and I pulled my backer sheet off of my transfer. I did not do it face up and pull my transfer off of my backer sheet. There is a very uh, important reason why I do it that way. There's less likelihood of me sticking my transfer sticky side backs to each other if I do it this way. Okay. So it's just a personal preference. It's much easier for me to do that because if the back of my transfer touches itself, it's super sticky, <laughs> um, I can put holes in my transfer and ruin my transfer. So it's, it's just one of those little tricks to try to make sure that you don't touch the back of your backer together or your transfer together. That's because this is brand new. You notice I was very careless with my modern floral and I wasn't as worried about it. That's because that transfer has been well used on many different types of surfaces, so he was not half as sticky as a brand new transfer is. Um, so some of it, obviously, as those of you that watch me regularly, my carelessness depends on how new is my transfer. But back to why I put the name on the back. First, as you notice, one side of my backer sheet is shiny and one side is dull. Your transfer goes back on your shiny side after you've washed it, and that's how you store your transfer. Um, it's like a sticker, right? So you, you can't just leave it hanging or your back is going to touch itself. You have to put it back on the piece of paper. So there is a difference to the two sides, and there's a reason that this is, you know, it's kind of like waxy coated or there's a sheen to it. So that's the side your transfer goes back on. That is why we put the name on the back. The other reason I put the name on the back is because... Oh my, this guy is really sticky. Um... When people come here and use my stuff, which happens pretty often, um, or when you're using your stuff, it helps you know which transfer goes on which backer sheet. Because trust me, if you're talking away and all of a sudden you got 10 pack backer sheets in front of you, it's a lot easier to just look at the back of it and say, oh, welcome goes on this one versus, ooh, what lines up with this and what's the size? So it's just, a, it's a much easier, you know, kind of way to um, help yourself out. Okay, so. I am putting my welcome on, but I want it and need it to be 
in the center of my hole. So I am, because this is for someone, I'm going to measure. <laughs> this was for me, you know, I would just eyeball it and leave it alone. But I do want to make sure that I'm level, because again, there's that big, huge optical illusion in this thing. So I am measuring just to make sure that I am uh, straight and centered. Yep, looks like I am. As close as a Maria is ever going to be. Okay, so now I have my welcome on here and I just go up and down every letter just to make sure that I have my uh, transfer sealed down so that when I push my paste across it, I don't um, have any air bubbles that will push the chalk underneath the transfer. Okay, so we're going to use current jam for welcome. I debated pretty hard about what color to do the welcome in, um, but I did go back and look at the pictures of this lady's front porch, and her house appears to be this color and white. So, I'm a little concerned that this is too dark for the board, but I did, you know, I do have these other boards that have this color on it, and it, it is bright. You can see it, so I did debate pretty long and hard about what color to make the welcome. But at the end, this color one. Now, I did wax the board, so if I hate it when it's done, I should be able to wash it off because I waxed the board. Um... Reds, though, are the one color I would say on a wood board. It's iffy as to whether or not you can wash it off. Now, if I had painted this board, I could totally wash it off. So I'm just literally going to dip and go. That's how easy this is. And we're going to be done. 27 minutes, ladies. Ha! And this is stunningly gorgeous when we're done. Well, I'm assuming. <laughs> we're not there yet. It does kind of look like I went too low, though. Oh well. It might be too low. Anyway, that's what makes it a Maria original. <laughs> Alright, so put my excess uh, paste right back in my container. I went too low. I'm carefully pulling it off because I don't want to pull my chalk paste off. And I pull straight up and down. Don't pull it flat. Um, if you pull straight up and down, you won't have any, or you minimize your curling. I did go too low. Darn it all. Okay, now you can't see it right now because the chalk is wet. So you just have a glare. But when the chalk is dry, you will be able to see it. The glare goes away. It is pretty though. And that's how fast your chalk paste dries. Because it's chalk. Voila! And we have a welcome sign like that. So see we have this really pretty welcome. Here, let's do this. Oh my. So this is our cute little welcome sign. It is hard to read the welcome though. So what we could do, let's go back to here so you can see. I could um, shadow it. What do you think? You think it's too, it's too dark, right? It's too dark. I could shadow it where I put uh, the welcome back over it and just offset it slightly and then do the fawn. And then it would have the like shadow in the current jam and then the fawn. That's a lot of fawn though. What do you think, ladies? What do you think? Should I, should I do it in another color? Oh my god, I'm, ooh, somebody's giving me a light. It's too dark, right Cass? It's too dark. It's really pretty though. <laughs> I'm in love with this sign. I just love the modern floral. I think it is so... So the lady that we're making this for is one of those ladies that... You know you have those people in your life that have an impact on your life, but they don't realize they have an impact on your life? She's one of those women. She totally had an impact on my life. Ooh, Cassie says now it's better. It's growing on you, isn't it? The more you stare at it. <laughs> um... So we all have those people in our lives, you know, that have an impact. And they just, they have no clue that they are having an impact on you. And this is one of those women. 
So I'm making it for her because she, I'm, I want to thank her for, you know, helping me at a point she had no idea she was even helping me. She was just having a general conversation with me one day. And this was a couple years ago, too. It's not even like it was recent. <laughs> you know, I'm really good at thanking people, you know, timely. <laughs> But I still think about her, and I think that's what it is. Um, I still think about her. I still think about the impact that she had on me. So that's why I'm like, you know what? She needs something. This is really cute. I don't know if I mind it so much. I don't know if I think it's too dark. Cheryl says she thinks it looks fine. I'll take a picture of it in the morning, and if you guys think I should add it. It is dark, but it's really pretty. I think it looks really gorgeous, Verge says. All right. We're leaving it alone. This is a really pretty sign. So again, I'll give you a better view so that you can kind of see the whole thing. Kind of in the center. I will take a picture tomorrow so you can see it. Um, but yeah, and now, see, you're right, um, Cheryl. Now you don't realize it's not straight, because it is straight. So this is our welcome sign number one. And we're only 30 minutes into this, right? So we could make another one. Because I did want to give her a few options. Just in case she hates it. Because while she had a really big impact on me, I really don't know her that well. <laughs> so, I don't know. Okay, that sign is pretty. So, the next one I wanted to do was a little more flower arranging. Um... So this is a white enamel board, which I think on her white siding might also look nice. Um, I'm not sure. I got, I got to make them and, you know, kind of think them through. She has stained wood chairs on her porch, which are the color of the um, board. So that might work. So what I wanted to do on this one was put a flower and some sprigs with welcome and a flower and some sprigs. Nothing fancy, nothing, you know, too outrageous. Kind of back to the whole color thing, though. And maybe it's too late. I, if you would make one of those again, it would look cool to make one of the flowers in the color. Oh, Cheryl. That is not a bad idea at all. So Cheryl's idea is, and maybe, we'll just make one. We'll make this other one tomorrow night. Um, Cheryl's idea, that's not a bad idea, Cheryl, at all, to, like, make one of the flowers the same color. That's a really good idea, Cheryl. And I could do that. I could just lay the transfer back over it and re-chalk it. That's a really good idea. Because it would give it that a little pop of color. That's a really good idea, Cheryl. Thank you. I might have to do that. So, I'll, we'll just make the one. I, we can, I'll let you guys go early. <laughs> Tonight. I don't really need to keep you guys a whole hour every night, right? I'm sure sometime, sometimes you might appreciate a shorter video with less yapping from Maria. So, I will, uh, we will hit end. So, I'm cleaning up my chalk base, and what I do is I go around the edges with my stir stick. Don't do this over your project like I'm doing. Because that's careless. <laughs> and if you're Maria, you'll dump paste on it. I, I tap off my stir stick. And then I just wipe my stir stick off and reuse them. I think the flower that you pointed should be the one, right? This one. This one right there. Right? Should be red. I'd have to wash my transfer. To do it that way. But then I can I can truly just line it right up and go right over it in red. Just a thought, but if you would make another one, oh, oh Cheryl, okay. If you make another, I think that would be even more beautiful. I agree, Cheryl. I think that would be. Um, we can try it, but I probably have to wash my transfer. So what I would do in that case is I would take my transfer. Where is that one? It's up here. It's very easy to line transfers up. And people are always so, oh my gosh, that's so challenging. It's really not. Because 
you're just bringing it into focus because you can see the chalk underneath it. Agree, Carol, looking at all of them. That is the one. Okay. All right. All right, so see, I can just very easily line it right up. I say this so do you want it to be perfect because I'm going to use another color if it was the same color I wouldn't be too worried about being you know obsessive about it being exact but because I'm going to do a different color it really needs to be perfectly lined up and it's not That's like almost perfect. Great, so we're just getting it um, lined up. What happens is I get it lined up and then because it's stuck to my fingers, when I go to move my fingers, it becomes unlined up. All right, so we're gonna try it. What the heck, right? Go big or go home. The Texas girls are back. So I'm just pushing it down. Now, we're going to get some tools out because this isn't just flour, right? It has leaves and things attached to it. So I'm going to need some little squeegees, some teeny tiny squeegees, and a drink of water. <laughs> okay, you ready? I'm going to try it. No, it's not laid up. Hang on. I moved it when I... Mary says go for it. Go big or go home, ladies, right? Go big or go home. You just really want to make sure that you're perfectly lined up. There we go. I think we're good. I hope it works or I'm going to feel bad. Don't feel bad, Cheryl. I have more circle boards. <laughs> and then you just either sand it off or paint it. So don't feel bad. You never have to feel bad. It's a great idea. And we should try it, right? What do we have to lose? Verge says, I got this. I got this. You're right. I got this. All right. So I'm just pushing it down. So I need to cut all this in because this is flour. This is leaves. So I'm actually going to use this itty bitty teeny weeny squeegee. Now what this itty bitty teeny weeny squeegee is, because there is no itty bitty teeny weeny squeegee, is this is a um, bigger squeegee that I cut up. Because we did not used to have the mini squeegee. So in order to have a teeny squeegee, we had to cut them. Now we have the mini squeegee. But I do have to say I do still feel that there are times the mini squeegee is just not teeny weeny enough. So I'm just doing the edge of the flower and then I'll go back and get the big part of the flower. And it's only really around this leaf that it's a problem because there's the leaf attached to it. So if I do it incorrectly, I'll get uh, red where the leaf is. And I don't want to do that. Are you on the edge of your seat? Are you eating popcorn feverishly? Can she do it? I don't know. That one, that's Bob the Builder. Can he fix it? <laughs> all right. So that should be all I need to do with the teeny weeny squeegee. And now we just do the current jam. Now it may not work as well because I didn't wash the transfer. So the transfer actually has the fawn on it. Normally if I'm going to switch colors I wash my transfer. But if it doesn't, if that's the case then it's really just a matter of washing the transfer and again laying it back down and doing it one more time. So I'm pushing my paste through, making sure I get in there. This 
smoothing out my lines. Okay, ready? Dun dun dun! Were we successful? Man. Some more line smoothing to do. Ready? Dun, dun, dun. I'm not gonna look. You guys look first. Did it work? It worked, but I will do it again. Okay, I'll show it to you so you can see. Um, that's because my trans I didn't wash my transfer. But if you look, it does work. It did work. I just have some spots where there was more fawn on my transfer than others. So what I will do is I will wash the transfer, lay it down, and um, redo it. And then it will totally work fine. But it totally worked. This is adorable. I, that was a great idea, Cheryl. Because you're right. It does look super cool with that one flower the same color as the words. It was a great idea. All right, so I will fix that, but I have to wash the transfer in order to do that, and because it's a D-sized transfer, I have to actually take it to the sink to wash it, so I can't do that with you guys, um, with me. But I will wash it, and then I will lay it back down and take a picture. Um, it is really, this is just a beautiful sign. I hope she likes it. I hope she likes it. I, I make stuff for people always, and I'm always like, I hope they like it. <laughs> oh, well. This is a Maria original if she doesn't. But that was a fantastic idea, Cheryl, so thank you. I will fix it so that you can see it. It's also still wet, which is why you can't see it. That was the pop it needed. Yep, I agree. It's perfect. Absolutely perfect. All right, so I'm making Maria, your independent chalk couture designer. Thank you so much for watching me. If you can share my video, I always appreciate that when you share my video. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it uh, helps me when you do that, so I appreciate that when you do it. Um, if you would like to see either one of these transfers, you can see them at www.chalkcouture.com slash Maria. This is Modern Floral and Welcome Script. And I'm 99% sure Welcome Script is still available. I don't believe it retired because um, it was a new transfer. Um, but it has those very two nice welcomes and home on it. So it makes a, it makes a really nice little um, welcome sign. And welcome signs are super popular. So if you want to make a gift, or a holiday gift or you know this is one of those where everybody loves a welcome sign you can't go wrong um okay that's all i really have to say tonight <laughs> we'll do the rest of it tomorrow night but i'm making maria your independent chalk couture designer thank you so much for watching me i hope you have a lovely evening and a great wednesday and i will be back at you if you're not doing anything tomorrow morning at nine o'clock i'm teaching a splash class um at crumby art in downtown elm grove um, and kids are welcome to that class. So it's at 9 a.m. Crumby Art. Just message me if you want to come. Thanks so much. I hope you're having a lovely, lovely night. Sleep well, ladies. Um, see you tomorrow. <laughs>